I'm Charlie Brooker and you're watching Screen Wiper programme all about television. Britain has to be the moaning capital of the world. We moan about trains. Bloody trains. We moan about the weather. Bloody weather. And we moan about the ongoing breakdown of society. <laughs> Bloody ongoing breakdown of modern society. In fact, you name it, we'll moan about it, which is presumably why TV consumer shows are still going strong. The granddaddy of all consumer shows was That's Life, a heady mix of hardcore whinging and life-threatening whimsy, which started in 1776 and ran for two million years, during which time it was compulsory viewing for pop-eyed reactionary f**k wipes everywhere. It was a show with something for everyone, provided you define everyone as people who snigger at vegetables that look like cocks. Mind you, the tomato is pretty funny looking too. Aside from incisive investigations into how many sodding peanuts you get in a marathon, it was also notable for its vaguely right-wing hue. Take, for instance, this satirical song from a 1973 edition, which cocks a snook at protesting lefty students. I appreciate opinions if they coincide with mine. When I'm asked out to a party, then I toe the party line. And anyone who disagrees is just a fascist swine. So let's hear it for the children of the free. Rah, rah, rah for the British University. It also featured light-hearted rape gags. If there was one thing that Rubens liked, it was a good rape. And it, he was a beggar for big bazookas. I shall start you off with a mild rape that you can, you can see in Munich. The Daughters of Leucippus. The two rapists on horseback are Castor... <laughs> they are Castor and Pollux. <laughs> I'll say that again, Castor and Pollux. And had a pop at the roaring evil of free-range eggs. The hens may be happier, but in terms of being healthy, there's no difference between free-range eggs and any other eggs. Tests have shown that even the most avid free-range egg supporters can't actually tell the difference. Yeah, the hens might be happier, but then again, f*** God's creatures, right, viewers? In health shops, free-range eggs cost seven pence a dozen more. Today, consumer gripes still get an airing thanks to programmes like Are We Being Served, an almighty whinge fest that sets out its stall from the off. We've spent weeks investigating customer service in restaurants across the UK, and as you've told us in our special survey, it's a sorry tale. Boo! For this particular edition, the setup involves some bloke called Arkin going undercover in some downmarket restaurants in an attempt to find things to whine about. And surprise, surprise, it doesn't take him long. Well, that does seem a bit rude, hang on. My gripe with this restaurant isn't the minimum spend. That's made perfectly clear at the bottom of the menu. What? I don't want to sound like a stroppy lover, but it's not what he said, it's how he said it. Boo-hoo! Yes, it seems nothing less than snivelling deference will impress Arkin and his team. Well, that and having everything just so. It's very noisy in here. There's a little comment on the back of the menu that asks, how are we doing? At the moment, not very well. This is like the Blair Witch Project for c Anyway, while Arkin's job is to pick holes, Julia takes to the streets to berate the British public for their disgusting complacency. in restaurants? Uh, yeah. Um, what happens when you don't get good service? We don't tip them. You don't tip them. No. So do you take the 12.5% service off the bill? Very good point. No. Ah, so you're Before still paying you. the service, really? Yeah. Which you shouldn't do. Yeah, and you should also kick the waiter right in the f***ing nuts on your way out. Well, you told them. As the show unfolds, the moans keep piling up. This woman's teed off because her daughter's been charged for an adult meal at a restaurant that decides who qualifies for a half price kiddie meal based on their height. The thing is, it's made clear on the menu and on this sign. Julie didn't notice that sign. Well, it's Julie's fault, then. It might be an idiosyncratic policy, but for God's sake, it's their restaurant. What's more, in my opinion, if you take a bunch of mewling kids to a restaurant, you should be charged triple and punched in the face every five minutes. Because kids in restaurants are a nightmare. They shriek, they puke, they run around, they smear food all over their stupid little faces. Actually, an undercover camera show that filmed children in restaurants and called them c that I would watch. Instead, Arkin pops up again with a squawking family to visit a bargain-priced eatery on a hellish bank holiday Monday to discover that, shock horror, it's not the ivy. Smile would have been nice. It's just not up to Arkin's standards. The food arrives, but still no smile. 
And the second waitress isn't exactly full of the joys of spring either. Well, I can't imagine why it must be really satisfying slaving away for peanuts in a cut-priced chain restaurant full of moaning little bastards. That chocolate extravaganza soon arrives and the kids are beside themselves. Shame about the waitress. Barely a smile flickered on the face of the waitress that brought it over. She's like... And the kids are like, wow, look at that. She's like... And you think, what are you doing? You're missing the opportunity to engage with these people that are really excited about their food. Oh, f*** you. The trouble with shows like this, I think, is that while there really are a billion things worth complaining about in this world, poor customer service isn't really one of them. Let's stop blowing each other up first, yeah? And then tackle the chain restaurants. And besides, I'd far rather eat in a place with grumpy staff who spit in your face than be served by a grinning android in a room full of joyless nitpickers like Arky. Oh dear, that's not very good. <laughs> now Adam Buxton takes on the persona of legendary director Ken Corder as he takes you behind the scenes of ITV's brilliant The Mint. Hello, I'm Ken Corder. Uh, I was the director, producer and head writer on this episode of The Mint, which you're watching now. Here comes Brian, arriving in Mint Mansion for another evening of uh, phone frolics and word search fun. The inspiration for The Mint came to me one night back in 2004 when I was quite drunk on Raspberry Hooch and it occurred to me, why aren't there more late-night shows on ITV that cater to drunk people and their low concentration needs? And I thought, bongo, if we can get enough drunk twats phoning in to try and win some money, not only will the show pay for itself, we'll make a load of money too and that is what classic telly is all about. It's just a classic formula. You know, a gay man with a flowery shirt and a beautiful woman all alone in a wonderful mansion except for a few amazing celebrity guests taking calls about a puzzle, you know? And that's something that everyone can relate to. Can you spell that, please? P-E-S-O. P-E-S-O. Peso, he thinks it is. Mope, pet, send, and sago. Good guess, but wrong, you thick twat. 